I'm in space, y'all! It doesn't look bad, actually. The ship looks great. Beautiful texture on the planet. Even the darkness in space looks pretty detailed. Fire! So now we get to try out the flying mechanics. Under the guidance of Vosco, I learned how to pilot the ship and convert power between systems. It may take a while, but I think I'll get the hang of it. Better be quick though, because space pirates have just jumped in to attack us. Pirates serve as a target for space combat tutorials. It's combat, but in space. It works virtually like any other space shooter. Wear down the shields with lasers, then blast them with your missiles or bullet weapons. Give it all a good mix, and voila! Death. To the victor goes the loot. Next up, navigation. Opening the star map, you can explore whatever world you can reach with fast travel, making it much easier to explore. Fast... Travel. We fast travel to where Fosco tells us to go. And why are we here? Because we don't want to make the same mistake Barrett did and lure the pirates to Constellation. Meaning we will take the problem head on, balls deep, and land near one of their outposts and convince, or convince, them to leave us alone. The outpost served as my first dungeon, but I needed to trek a little before I got there. On the way I encountered this cute little guy, and then bumped into its pissed off brother. Only now with a dangerous enemy does it tell me about scanning. Scanning the creatures, wildlife and so on adds to survey data. A complete survey data can be sold off for credits, as well as inform me of what materials you can gather on the planet. However, I wasn't sure if I was doing it right. With the scan greyed out, I wasn't sure how I was meant to do it. I wasn't sure whether or not I was meant to hold the button, or if I was just meant to scan a bit at a time. While trying to figure it out, the alien Pokemon lost patience and tried to kill me. So I went Scarface on it. Say hello to my little friend! Scanning the body got me 13%. So it turns out the way scanning works is that you do need to scan multiple of the same thing to increase how much data you gather on it. You also need to be within 10 feet of it in order for it to work. It's also very helpful when you're trying to find ore deposits to mine. Arriving at the pirate outpost, I sneak inside and meet up with Voss. Fuck, that is a five gap and a half. As I stealth, something jumps out onto me, but doesn't spot me. So this little thing is a heat lich. I kill it. And that's the end of that story. Sneaking further in, searching every corner for goodies, I found some spice worms to snack on later, followed by a few pirates. I sneak attack one of them, almost killing him, then rat a tat tat the rest down. Oh, you ain't getting away, boy. I need to give you three new arseholes. I accidentally discovered that the scan also highlights items that you can pick up which still doesn't answer why there's milk in the toilet. I encountered more of the pirates who have been written so cartoonishly evil as I listened to them giggle of a recording of someone dying. Looking for potential new weapons to fight them with, a challenge pops up, then another one when I start the fight. At first I thought these challenges work similar to the badass rank in Borderlands, but I was mistaken. During the fight I leveled up and got a point to spend, here I learned that the skills are divided into five categories. Whenever you buy a skill, it unlocks a challenge. Completing said challenge means that you can spend another point on the skill to rank it up and make it more effective. When it comes to Todd Howard, all roads lead to Stealth Archer, so I leveled up my pistol in preparation for the suppressed weapons bonus that comes with rank 2. Another fight and loot later, I learned how encumbrance is now life-threatening. Normally, actions like sprinting and jumping drain your O2 or stamina bar. When encumbered, even the simple act of running, not sprinting, running, drains it. If your stamina runs out, you then start to build up CO2. If the CO2 meter fills up, you then start losing health. So Vasco quickly became a pack mule, and I gave him armor, weapons, and square fruit to hold. Before reaching the rooftop, I bump into a safe. Oh, one second. I bump into a safe and tried out lockpicking, and as someone at this point who has now done a bit of lockpicking, I don't think I like the system. The way it works is you get a multi-ringed lock to pick using a set number of keys provided to you. The keys can only be used one at a time and each of their nibs need to fit into a hole. Sometimes they will fit perfectly into a ring, other times they will only fit partially. Once you use a key on a ring, the ring then changes shape and then you'll have to fit another key inside. The problem is, you don't know what the next ring is going to look like 
until you've used the key, meaning that you might end up wasting a digipick, which is the equivalent of lockpicks in this game, to undo what you just did and put the correct key in. And it is true that you can line up as many keys as you want into the holes to try and find out which one is probably the best, but there's no visual clue as to what the next ring is going to look like, so really, this is just down to guess and luck. It's pretty stupid, honestly. In the safe, once I actually picked it, I got a few goodies including a brand new laser pistol. I then snuck up the ladder and found a legendary helmet at level 2. Leaving the room, I emerged face to face with a pirate leader named Brogan. Sup, bro? He demanded I hand over the Frontier, which is the ship I inherited from Barrett, for the treasure on board it. Violence was a tempting option, but I wanted to see how persuasion worked in this game. And once again, I am not too sure if I like it. Rather than a mini game, this is just down to a percentage. You have a set number of turns to speak during your persuasion attempt. Each turn you get a list of things to say, each having a chance to succeed and a score. Green has the highest chance to succeed, but offers a low amount of points. Yellow is so-so, and red is high risk, high reward. To pass the challenge, you need to fill this meter with enough score. So here, I need to score 4 points within 3 turns to pass. One other factor to consider, with a handful of salt, because I'm not sure if I'm understanding this correctly at the minute, if you get down to 1 turn left, and the option you choose passes, then you can't fail the challenge, and it keeps going until either you win the persuasion, or fail a check. Luckily for me, I won the challenge, and no violence was necessary. Actually, let me rephrase that. I won the challenge, and violence was optional. <laughs> With more blood spilled just to get a tiny bit more experience, I gathered some new toys, got a rare helmet, and fast traveled back to my ship. With the pirates taken care of, we could now safely travel to Constellation. What's in store for us there? We're going to find out next time on Starfield. <laughs>